Hello, my name is Leslie Atherton and this is another one of my slightly strange stories. This is called Hail to Abigail Hale. Abigail Hale is not so sweet, her skirt's too short and her hair's too neat. Her bike's too muddy and her mind's too dark, she scares us all at the skateboard park. She's a witch and we all know it, filthy witch and balmy poet. She casts her spells on all of us, so kick her under a big red bus. Abigail's dog barked, and she stroked his head fondly. He barked again. Constantine was his name, though she'd long forgotten why. She barked back at him and twisted his ear a little. He liked that. They were content, the pair of them, and all was well in the world of Abigail Hale, for now. And that was the best a person could ever really hope for. Constantine ran beside Abigail as the frail-looking lady cycled through the woods, a line skirt flapping as she pedalled faster and faster. She was doing well for an old bird, she often thought, and since her last birthday she had often sung herself the Beatles song, When I'm 64, with a little giggle. She wouldn't be able to sing it for much longer. Ah well, Abigail Hale was getting older, as are we all. But Abigail Hale was content. Certainly, her arthritic fingers sometimes struggled to unfasten the knot of a headscarf fastened under her chin. Today she struggled more than usual. Her arms had been jostled by the action of the bicycle on an unusually rocky ride and were feeling stiff and tense, perhaps even a little shaky. But all was otherwise well in the world of Abigail Hale. She removed her flask and sandwiches from the bike panniers with an elaborate flourish. Et voila, she laughed to nobody in particular. Constantine looked at her, as he always did, with a mixture of admiration and disdain. Dogs were like that. To many of the older inhabitants of the village, Abigail was generally described as really rather nice, or a sweet little thing. Yet amongst the youngsters, especially one suspicious and moody-faced pre-teen, she was known as the Dwarf Witch. The teen moaned, me and my mates don't like her, she's like weird and her hair is just wrong and I don't like how little she is and she put a spell on me and Melanie. No she didn't Katie, she didn't, said Melanie, anxious for truth. Well no, she didn't, but she would have if she wasn't such a crap witch. Katie grimaced, hating Abigail Hell. Oddly, Katie, not normally known for her insight and understanding of humanity in all its alternatively acceptable forms, was on this one occasion almost correct. Abigail Hale was indeed a witch, of a type. She was a circus witch. You may never have encountered a circus witch. I hadn't until I'd heard about Abigail Hale. It was Abigail's deep, dark secret. Before she became old and ignorable, she was the beautiful contortionist who journeyed with a travelling show. Her friends were the ginger-haired dreadlock jugglers, the demons of Diablo, the bearded, the tattooed and the pierced. She was one among them. She could bend and grapple with her own body. She could squeeze it into all manner of impossible poses. She could, even now in her later years, suck her own toes by bending them back via the back of her body and past her ears towards her face. She was a marvel. And about her being a witch? Do you believe the truth of that yet? I heard about the witch part of things from a tall, blonde, godlike man who was at that time perched imposingly on the branch of a low-lying oak tree. The same tree sheltered Abigail Hale, who lounged on the picnic rug below, and Constantine, who lay with legs upright and ears back, a truly relaxed canine. I'd happened upon the unlikely threesome during a ramble and search for wild fungi. It had been a wonderful day, and I was glad to meet them. I greeted the tall man with a curious hello, and he looked down to me without interest. You need the power of Abigail Hale, he asked. Power? What power? She was a little old lady, a neighbour, an eccentric. You don't know about her power? Let me tell you about her power. And he did. He told of circus clowns with broken dangling limbs which mended at her touch. He told of marigold petals picked at dawn. He told of potions brewed from mint and parsley and sage and lemon balm, and how such potions would heal coughs and colds, and also cured a sword sweller of his tonsillitis within moments. The most interesting thing he shared with me that day was about Abigail Hale's passion for Mr. Memory, the circus's aptly named memory act. At first she admired him from afar, then from a little nearer and nearer still, till she was finally close enough to tell him how she felt. He'd laughed at her. 
So, understandably, she silently swore revenge on this unfeeling cerebral bully. Her love potion, poured discreetly into his Jack Daniels the following week, changed everything. He fell blindingly in love with her. She was cruel, she was mocking, and she had her revenge. She married him and treated him badly, then left the circus, continuing with her contortions of mind and body, only in private, and on the personal commission of those who knew her well and who would pay generously for her services. I was interested in this story, occasionally looking down to Abigail Hale with her blank face. When her toy boy lover, the blonde godlike Caravaggio, finished speaking, she accused me of putting out my wheelie bin far too early and of therefore creating a fortnightly eyesore. And worse, she mocked me for being unable to eat my meals while twisted and turned into a tiny box as she could. I could not dispute the truth of her statements, though wondered enormously at the relevance. Suddenly I didn't care about Abigail's powers or her tiny, twisting, turning body. I just wanted to taunt her and to chant the rhyme of the local kids. Abigail Hale is not so sweet, her skirt's too short and her hair's too neat. Her bike's too muddy and her mind's too dark, she scares us all at the skateboard park. She's a witch and we all know it, filthy witch and balmy poet. She casts her spells on all of us, so kick her under a big red bus. But I resisted, I said nothing, instead I smiled. I'll try harder, Abigail. She nodded, ignoring her toy boy lover completely. Constantine sighed as she stroked his head with real affection. And when I left, her toy boy lover followed behind me. He was unnecessary to her and had always been. Abigail and Constantine, the pair of them. Constantine ensured that all was well in the funny old world of Abigail Hale. And many a time I wondered if I'd imagined the entire meeting. <laughs>